Well, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody. It's Joe and Angel. Welcome to another Mailbag Monday, where we take time and answer some questions that you sent in. Now, we're at the end of summer. Yes, we are. And uh, just curious how your summer's been. Send us in and let us know. But we've had a... <laughs> Interesting summer, to say the least. The great news, of course, that I'm going to be grandma. Yes. Um, that was my big summer. <laughs> but it's been hot, 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 hot. And other places more than Florida, which I was surprised. We went to Georgia and uh, ooh wee, it was hot up there. But then we went to South Georgia, where my family is, and had the best time. Yes, we did. We uh, Home cooking. It was extraordinary. Yeah, straight from the garden. I'm telling it you, was so big good. Garden, huge garden. We big had a still grow garden. We had a great family night where like 25 of us came together, and I got to just enjoy. The, all ended up all the my cousins were in a room, and we just all sat there and talked and had the best time. A genuine redneck reunion. It hey, was hey, awesome. hey, 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 <laughs> hey! I, I think with all you mean that I'm honored to be part of it. It's great. <laughs> it was really fun. And let me tell you, the peas and corn. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Some good Vidalia onions. Mm. Oh, man. Yep. I grew up about 30 minutes from the famous yes. Vidalia onions. Yep. Yes. Oh, they're good. Yeah, mm. very good. All right, guys. I've always been curious. How did you both meet, and what was your initial impression of each other? Oh, my. <laughs> it's an interesting story how we met. It is. You just take off on this, baby. You do it better than me. Well, we got hired at a church in Oklahoma. And my ex-husband was, Joe was his boss. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I barely met him. The only time I ever saw him was, uh, other than hello, nice to meet you, um, was when he preached at the church. Yeah. And he would preach on parenting. And I had a new six-month-old son. So the few times that I did see him, I would... Questions, questions. Yes. How do you do this? What should I do? Let's talk about discipline. You know, I'm (laughs) sure he was sorry to see me coming because I was just like... But um, we never really... We knew who each other were, but we never... It's couples. We never went to lunch or dinner or anything. Nope. And we all got fired at the same time. (laughs) 27 got fired well, that didn't get same time. Fired. We got laid off. They ran out of money. They did. It felt like being fired. Yeah. I refer to it as the great humbling. Because <laughs> we'd only lived out there six months. Yeah. And so anyway, time went on. A couple of years later, we started a church. And every year we'd have Joe come and, and preach. Great church. At the church. And we just always had a lot of respect for him and his wife. And. See them occasionally around town at school, mostly, and because uh, our kids would go to the same school. And um, then uh, after several years, uh, my husband had started having affairs, and we uh, were going to step down. And I said, uh, I called Joe, and I said, hey, we're going to step down this weekend, and uh, I just need help. I have two kids, nine and 13, that are devastated. Would you just please uh, meet with me? And he said yes, and we met. And uh, he said, uh, you know, this town is a graveyard for you, girl. Uh, there's nothing left here for you. Um, do not let your son bear the shame of this. Get him out of here. Go home. And if you can, don't date because you're the only safe place for them to land. Then we walked out of the restaurant, and he goes, you'll be fine. Petting an old dog. Go I'm just him. crying. I'm crying. And come over. I hate when you say that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I uh, uh, went home. I did what he said. I never dated for 12 years. Raised my kids. I started a new career. Yep. I was, it was a difficult times, but, you know, wanted my kids to be in private school because they'd always been in private school and I felt like it was too much of an adjustment for them to to go public and so worked really hard and so my family came home to my church my church was wonderful very good 
once a year, I'd write to them and just say, hey, could you believe God with me? I'd email them, you know, that the kids are going through this. Blah, blah, blah. And they would write back just encouragement, you know, and everything. When my daughter finally got married, I said, uh, called them. And I said, hey, I just want to tell you guys, both of my kids graduated from college. They're doing so well. Uh, my daughter's getting married and we did it, you know, and That's I just, good. and I said, I just want to thank you so much for, you know, you're agreeing with me all these years. And they both were on the phone and they were in Tennessee and they said, you did good mama. <laughs> and um, so I said, well, thank you so much for your support, blah, blah, blah. A few weeks later, I was uh, on a roof somewhere in Houston because <laughs> I was doing um, uh, catastrophic, catastrophic yeah. adjusting at the time. And, uh, the hurricane had just gone through there, and I got a text from a friend of mine that said, what happened to Denise? And I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. And they said, well, they're doing a memorial service for her at church. And I said, oh, my goodness. I just talked to them. I I assumed that something had happened. Uh, and so I just sent him a text that said, I'm so sorry for your loss. He says, thank you. A few weeks later, I just sent him another text and I said, hey, Jeff, it's OK. I'm just going to check on you once in a while because I know what it's like to have your world implode. And uh, when the dust settles, everybody's gone. Nobody knows what to say to you. They don't invite you over. They don't invite you to dinner. They don't it want to come It's awkward. It's awkward. I understand. It's very awkward. And um, so I said, I'm just going to check on you. He goes, please do. So once a month, I'd just say, hey, how you doing? And he'd say, <laughs> good. Girls have moved in with me, blah, blah, blah. And I said, great. Stay busy. Da, da, da. So it was just nothing to it, really. Nope. And then one day he sent me a little bit of a longer text. And it said at the bottom, it wasn't a big text or so. When I say a little bit of a longer text, I mean a little bit of a longer text. <laughs> it's a little bit of a and little then, text. Yeah. And he said, uh, something. And he said, can you tell, talk to a woman in a while? I said, listen, I'm five states away. I'm not in ministry, but I understand it very well. Uh, pretty harmless. If you want to ever talk, feel free to give me a call. And he did. And we started talking. Then he came to Naples. I was going to be in Naples at the same time. And he said, let's meet at the airport. Sure. Then I was standing at the airport and I'm thinking, oh, <laughs> what? this could be really weird. Yeah, you know, I awkward. mean, I have not seen him in 12, 12 years. years. Yeah. And I said, this could, and the last time I saw him, it was horrible. So um, anyway, uh, he said, so he's, he got off the plane and I'm just kind of nervous standing there and he, and I'm, I'm waiting, at, you know, when people <laughs> come through. And I said, how about a hug for an old friend? And he walked over and just kissed me. Yep. I and mean, I was just like, whoa, those lips have not been touched for a long time. Well, I, I, had, I thought I had no pre-thought of anything. I did not think that up. I'm walking up the ramp and I'm just thinking like, well, why don't I just kiss her? I'm 67. I got no time to waste. Let's find out if this is going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So I just went for the lips. It was a great kiss. I really enjoyed that. I thought, I want to do that again. And the rest is history. <laughs> so our initial impression of, of each other was probably not much. <laughs> because, you know, I mean, there was no reason for it to be much. But uh, uh, but I always had a deep respect for the ministry and uh, what, he, what, he, what he spoke on and, and the gift that God had given him to do. Well, it's just, just the carnal side of it. Angel was... Uh, an administrator of a 3,000 member church. She did all the hiring, all the firing. She had great things they'd do on Sunday at a cappuccino bar. They ripped up all the carpet in church. You could take your coffee and cappuccino into the auditorium. It was very different, very modern, just very, very out of the box. And I thought, man, this is the way church ought to be. This is awesome. So uh, she had incredible gifts. So uh, we're two total opposites, though, that met, met at the airport and hooked up really nice because Opposites attract. <laughs> very opposite. Very, very opposite in, in everything. And so, but we have a good time. We laugh and we do. And we just celebrated five and years. And we're good friends. Very good more friends. More than anything. Yes. Tell the truth to one another. Yes. Sometimes we should do it with a little more love. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We're really good. Yeah. We're we really, do. we're very good. We do. Joe, what are some common misconceptions people have about marriage and how can these be addressed? 
So well, it's not La La Land. You're not going to Disney World. You're not going to ride any rides. <laughs> Marriage is work, W-O-R-K. And so hopefully you're like getting up and going to work with somebody uh, because that's what it is. Uh, what happens, most people get married under the wrong <laughs> impression. They think, oh, I'm going to live in heaven. No, you're not. You're going to get in fight probably the first two days and probably on the honeymoon, you know, because you're not going to agree. And could, you know, try to tell people opposites attract. When God made Adam, he looked and said, and he was talking about all things he created the first six days. The first time God ever said, not good. He was looking at a man, not good for man to be alone. I'm going to make a helper. And so he made a woman. He made somebody totally different, looks different, built different, designed different, opposites attract. You know, I was an engineer for 12 years. I don't know about gear ratios, opposites. You put two sets of gear to the same number of teeth and turn the machine on. They're going to share one another opposites attract the same thing in, in in god's world of marriage opposites attract you're very seldom going to agree on everything it just doesn't happen that's why you're good for one another i think what you don't think you think what i don't think i know what you don't know you know what i don't know it's a great blessing god made i think one of the biggest misconceptions that i had going into a marriage and i think a lot of particularly <laughs> women have is that i thought i thought that he could fulfill Everything that was a hole in my uh, life, he could make me happy. He could, he could, uh, you know, just fulfill everything that I wasn't fulfilled in, and that's not true. Nope. No person can do that. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. And once you get that, I think marriage is a breeze yep. after that. And I think your expectation of what to expect from your spouse that they're your joy gland. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's just not true. Yeah, they're not designed to make you happy. You got to get your happiness on your own. You do. <laughs> so, and unfortunately, it takes you a lot of maturing to get to that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If you survive those first three months, the first three years, first seven years, get the hunt. Hey, I think we got it made now. We understand one another. We're not the same. And that's a God thing that we're not the same. It's a good thing that we're well, not the same. And another thing is, I think you, no matter what, how similar your family life and your background may be, it was different. Yes. And uh, yes. in my first marriage, uh, I'd never been around divorced. I had no one in my family had ever divorced. I'm talking about aunts, uncles, everything. And then my husband came from a hard divorce and he had no concept of what a family looked like because he'd been raised in boarding school. So it was a, it was a challenge to, Bring those two worlds together, and it took a took a long time. Well, and, and what people get mixed up with, you, you can marry somebody that's very gifted in the area, technically, mechanically, business wise. That doesn't mean they're great at marriage. Those are two different worlds. They're, they're not the same. Well, he's successful in this. Well, that doesn't mean he should be successful in marriage. That's why you need to learn how to date, get to know one another, ask the right questions, ask a lot of questions, and realize you're not the same. You know, uh, while well, my daughters got married, I told them. You, you're not made some, I don't care what you, 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 you don't want love, but love's the most expensive four letter word in the universe. You tell somebody I love you, get out your checkbook, your 401k, your hunting dog, your bats, boat, your rod and reel, and pile that on the table. Cause love's going to cost you something. It costs God everything to love us, but love's a wonderful thing and everybody needs to do it. God said it's not good for man to be alone. I'm going to make you a helper. God knew exactly what he was doing when he made marriage. Opposites coming together to help one another. And so if you just read the Bible, you get a lot of wisdom as to what that, what it should look like. Absolutely. And I think that, uh, that seriously, if you just work on you. Yes. Come on. Bottom line. And allow God to work on them. Yes. Then it makes for a much more. You peaceful. cannot change your spouse. Only God can do that. Absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. So, uh, I mean, that's the best thing I ever learned. And sadly, I was going through divorce when I learned it, but, um, uh, you know, I did learn that, you know, all I can do is work on me. I can't yeah. fix anybody else. Oh. And, you know, honestly, that's a very liberating thing when you yes, realize that. You it know, is. I can accept you and I love you, but it, I, I can't change you. No, that's your job. Yep. So I would say that's a good starting point. Yes. In your experience, what are the key ingredients for a successful and fulfilling marriage? Well, we pretty much just covered it. But I keep working on you. The minute you get sidetracked trying to change your spouse, you're in the wrong road. You're at a dead end highway. You cannot change your spouse. You can only change you. They'll, they'll adapt to your changing because nobody stays the same when they get married. You're still growing in the grace and knowledge of God. You're still growing. I don't care how good you think they are. They're not grown yet. And, uh, 
I don't care if you're married for 50, 60, 70 years, the last day you're here on this planet, you'll still be growing. You'll be learning something new about one another. I don't care how long you've been married. It's a growing process. It never, it never ends, never changes. It's an adventure. It's like going to Disney and riding a ride. It's an adventure. <laughs> It really is. And uh, it can be a fun adventure or yes. it can be a miserable adventure. Well, it's up to you. It is up to you. And so. Um, really, the pressure's off. What Angel said, the pressure's off when you realize I'm not responsible for them. I'm just responsible for me. I like hanging out with you. I like going place with you, fixing stuff with you, problem solving with you, hugging and kissing you. But you're not God. I, I like doing things with you, but you're not God. God's God. You got to keep in the right place. You're right under God, but you're not God. So keep it balanced. Yeah, it's true. Marriage can be a wonderful, wonderful thing, or can be the noose around your neck. <laughs> oh, Lord. And uh, yeah, exactly. And it can be just a fight from morning till midnight every day of your life if you want it to be. And you'll never win that fight because only God can change a human. You can't do that. Yeah. I remember when I was first married, I used to say, I. I was very cocky back then. I'm still, really? I'm still a little cocky, but not like I was back then. I'd say, oh. I'll tell you one thing. There's some things that are not worth peace. And I meant it. And I meant until you get your priorities right, we're not going to have peace. And I made sure that was the truth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Uh, who ended up having to change? Yeah, well. Me. <laughs> yep. So, uh, being stubborn, being bullheaded, digging in, those don't win. Love wins. Yes, it does. And it will win Somewhere in the every Bible, single it. time. <laughs> it will. We love you guys. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next week. Don't forget, pass this on to your friends. Yes. Talk to you then. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life got a great future for you and your family and we're here to help you get there please make sure you visit joe mcgee ministries on facebook youtube and instagram there you find all of our friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family while you're at it be sure to visit joe we have all sorts of materials books dvds you name it all there to help you your marriage and your family succeed